So here is the string section on GarageBand iOS. And as a violinist with some 35 years experience, I should really be the first to diss this piece of software, but actually I'm in the opposite camp. I think it's an incredible piece of software, uh, not only because of the sounds, but it actually raises people's awareness of what string parts actually do. So I'm going to show you a bit about this now. Um, we have also a good music theory lesson in the form of the eight brown bars that you can see in front of you, which give you the diatonic chords of a certain key. And in this case, it's C major. C major is this one here. And then we have the diatonic chords that are made up of notes of that scale. So C, D minor, E minor, F, G, and A minor. Now there are two other chords you can see here. You can see B flat, which is a chord that's a flat and seventh, which is very often used in pop music. And then we have B diminished here, which is what you get if on the piano, if you play a three note chord starting on B. So you have B, D and F. Now notice what I'm doing here. I'm actually bowing across these little brown bars here. The faster you bow, the louder it gets. Now you have to preempt any quiet or loud sections in your song, otherwise you can be caught out and it won't catch up. But if you play loudly, and softly with a break in between, you can actually be quite sudden with your changes. Now, at the moment, we've got the five instruments. We've got first violins and second violins, which are the same instrument. One just plays slightly lower than the other. That's the second violins. The viola is a different instrument altogether. It's bigger than a violin and is tuned a fifth down. So it's actually a bit lower uh, sounding, quite deep sounding, but not as deep as the cello, which is the next one down. And then lastly, we've got the double bass. So if I take, I can take any of these instruments out, let's say I take the violins away and I just want a low string sound as opposed to this. So you can decide on what you want. Now, if you're recording a bit of rock and pop, you've got a Fender bass and you've got some drums and you've got some keyboards, maybe you'd want to leave out the double basses because you don't want to cloud your mix. So you'd end up with this. Notice that wherever you start on the little brown bar here determines the voicing of your chord. There are many, many possibilities. Now this is called cinematic, this sound. There are actually four sounds here. We've got cinematic, modern, pop and romantic. Sticking with cinematic for the moment, if I use the autoplay function on setting one, I get a line that's generated by GarageBand itself, which is pizzicato throughout. And you tap it again to stop it. Now, you get actually different variations here. If I use two fingers, I get a variation and three fingers. So you get a lot of different variations. So if I go to auto play two now, this is going to be bowed. There's your second finger. There's your three fingers together. Now, Apple have given you these loops. They said, well, there you go, there's something. Now, when you record this, you can actually edit the notes afterwards. And that's really clever. It's saying to a beginner who's, you know, just wants to get something down, well, there's something. But it's also saying to the more experienced user, well, actually, there you go, you can change it afterwards. So, 
Just going round to autoplay three, this is going to be a little bit more complicated. And then also play four. The sounds, I hope you'll agree, are absolutely outstanding. They're incredibly good. Now, we've got different notes and different lines that are played regard, um, with regard to the, your four different um, sounds here. So if I play C on modern or whether it's pop and then lastly we've got the romantic so you've got very very wide ranging sounds there now the other thing you can do if you're a string player you can go to notes here and actually play individual sounds now the cello there are your open strings, so you'd hear a cello tuning up doing this. And then tuning the D string, the G, and the C. Notice the little symbol here on the left. You can see a little bow symbol there. If I hold that with one finger so it lights up, you get pizzicato. Now, you have the little dots. I don't know if you can see those on the screen here. We've got a dot at the bottom, which represents third fret, as it were. So if you've got C, you'll get an E flat there, an F and a G. So you can actually play individual lines on this. Now, that's not very easy. And actually, previous versions of GarageBand only had this on. Now, if you go to piano on GarageBand and other sounds, you can actually play these string sounds on a piano instrument, which is a little bit easier to, to, get, um, to get to grips with. But if I go back to chords, I'm going to press record now. I'm going to record a line and show you the edit window. Okay, so now I've done that, I'm going to go back to my edit window and you can see that green graphical representation of what's just happened. If I go on that and click edit, you can see all of the notes that GarageBand has put in. Now, at the moment, for those of you in the know with the music theory, that sounds quite modern. It's, kind of, it's that, got that sort of Lydian feel. There's an F sharp on that C major chord. There it is. So I could, if I just want something that's a little bit more conservative than that, I could change those F sharps to an F. And now listen to that. There you go, that's a little bit more uh, sort of on the beaten track, as it were. Now, I can also vary the articulation of that string sound. At the moment, they're all bowed and they're all quite legato. Now, I could draw a box round of round these uh, sounds here and actually change the articulation. So if I just click on one of them, here we go. If you go to more, articulation. We've got three choices. We've got legato, staccato, or pizzicato. Let's go staccato. So now the strings will be more, uh, more lively with this line, with the legato ones underneath. That's incredibly good, incredibly good, and it's just, it's just, um, it just underlines the power of what you can do here. So um, now I can also change the, the notes here. I can ba -da 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 I could maybe bring that one back down to here. So there are all sorts of things you can do to change the um, um, change the um, the sounds from what Apple essentially have given you. Now if I just 
take the um, those two notes and maybe move them rhythmically. Oh, just put them back on the line there. There we go. So you can get a, a pretty good line. Maybe it's it's a great help with composition techniques as well. Getting something that will just give you um, a starting point and you can tweak away and then you get something really nice out of that. So also, as, as with the drum sounds, the bass sounds, anything else on Logic, you can actually um, you can actually adjust the, the volume of each one as well. If I just go to there, velocity. There we go, I'll make these loud now. Anything is possible. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed that string demonstration. They are an amazing addition to any record and any anything you listen to at the moment will have strings in one form or another, whether it be a synth or real.